You do know the microphone's picking this up, and this is now the intro for this. <laughs> welcome to. Welcome to. I'm Joe Kazuki again. Um, I'm not well. No, we can tell. Um, so. Okay, so. I ain't no chicken. I'm a bear bird crocodile, or some description. So, essentially, yes, the aim of this game is to eat more of these tasty little red guys than Mr. Vile. Mm. Which is sometimes trickier than it looks. I think at this point it's usually alright. Nope, that's mine. His AI, I think, is actually really pretty good in terms of just going for tasty ones. But maybe, I think one strategy is just always to stay right in front of him. <laughs> because then the ones he's gonna go for, you're gonna get. So it's all good, but not necessarily guaranteed to work. And you have to do it for quite a long time. It's a tricky thing. Yeah, given that the rest of the game, it's not like super easy, but no. a lot of it's not a massive challenge. Whoa. Oi! But you can really get stuff on this and, and the mummies thing in Gobi. Oh yeah, the mummies are both like really quite hard. <laughs> this, no. Nope. You get away from that. These are my yumblies! Your name is Mr. Vile, you're meant to lose. Chomp chomp! Do you think he's called Mr. Vile because he's vile? Or do you think he's vile because he's called Mr. Vile? <laughs> louder than the tests? Well, screw the tests! They never told me they loved me. I don't know. Um, so yeah, this is where it's supposed to get harder. You're not allowed to eat the yellow ones, only the red ones, and Mr. Vile will never eat the yellow ones. So, it's harder for you, because you can wind up doing it, if you're not careful or if you're unlucky. This is mine, this one's mine, and this one's mine, and that one's yours, and that one's yours, and this one's mine, and... This one's mine. They're all mine, but you're refusing to listen to that, aren't you? Mr. Gosh Dunn. You got a nice lead there. I did, but how long would it last? Oh, yeah, let's not rest on our laurels. And my laurels are very unstable, so... Okay, I think I've got it. Because he has to get five in a second. Which is kind of impossible. So, this game is where it gets trickier. Because he will start to switch up which ones you're meant to be eating. So at first it's like, okay, eat the yumblies. Same as always, right? Right. But then after a little bit of time, sometimes exactly as you're eating one, it will change. And you will get a slight delay. Fortunately, I think Mr. Vile starts to move more slowly. I'm gonna wait for it to change to red and then... Snamping party! Snamping? Snamping. I love snamping. It's like That's snapping, <laughs> it's between snapping and jumping. If you fail, do you have to do all three tasks again? I don't know, but I get the horrible feeling we'll be finding out. <laughs> no! <laughs> God no, damn it! No. It's got a lead! And I can't even see any yumblies. Okay, change the yellow now! Okay, come on, we can do this. I think the other thing is when you're chomping, you, yeah. you go slightly off course. Oh, only just. But only just is good enough. Never lost before. So, in your face. If you talk to him. Oh, no, I am scared. <laughs> Three extra lives. Screw that. I mean, I'm gonna slide off like a slug, thank you very much. Why would you do that? If you, you wanted more life, yeah, if you... If you oh, because you get three lives yeah, and you, you can... Right. right. But you <laughs> lose a life for every time you lose. Yeah. And it's tougher, and I have maximum lives at the moment anyway, so... Screw you, Vile. I don't need you. All I need is this area over here. Aha! Uh -huh. It all loops back round to Jinjo's in the end. I think you could probably come back here with boots and or invincibility if you tried hard enough. But I think it's just so kind of here. simpler to come back as a crocodile. 
Didn't do. <laughs> Didn't think many people have ever said that. No, it's just easier to come back here. That's a crocodile. <laughs> and yes, if you are in a non banjo form and you get all ten jiggies, fanfare will play. Well, that's the boots you can get. Anyway, um, in the non banjo form, then the fanfare will play, but you don't do a little dance, which kind of makes sense. Lazy. No more lives to be gotten mm -hmm. from me. And that is. I think that's everything in the world then. Right? Yep, sure is. 25 minutes, not bad, not bad. We're doing this fairly quickly. Yeah, you are. Not just me, you're doing very well yourself. I am Only clank this cavern. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about just Bubble Gloop Swamp Break, I mean, in general, the Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> the whole game. <laughs> right. And, it's a bit of a shame that little Crocodile Banjo walks so slowly. Uh, oh, also, you might have noticed when you were in. Um, Inside the giant crocodile, there were some little hopping shoes that we didn't go and use. That's because we can't, yeah? That's not going to happen for another few worlds, so... Um, however, if you're having trouble with uh, the Mr. Vile game, maybe leave it for now and come back once you can use those, because it really makes it so much simpler. Just, like, so much simpler that you almost want to cry. Maybe not cry. <laughs> but... It, yeah. You know what I mean, maybe. <clears throat> There's also, as far as I'm aware, no way to make Mumbo's magic um, turn off before it's destined to, but that's not too big a problem. But yeah, you need to be a little tiny crocodile so you can squeeze through this pipe and you get yourself a neat little secret. Form of a giant book. Poke, 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 oh, poke. Ow, ow. Sorry. <laughs> I just felt I had to poke you for no real reason. But yeah, so this is Cheeto the Spellbook, and he will tell you magical secrets. There's a reason he's called Cheeto. Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, so he tells you wonderful cheats, which let you get special features. So he just told us the code Blue Eggs, which we'll use at some point. Essentially, just go to Treasure Trove Cove, go into the sandcastle, and stomp the letters of that code to- I wonder what it gets you! I'm pretty sure you're getting a nice new hat for Team Fortress 2. Woo! It was way ahead of its time this yes. game. For years, people were like, what the fuck was the point of that? Oh, now I get it! <laughs> I would love to see a bunch of scouts running around with a banjo because it would be head. <laughs> It'll come in. Well, I somehow think that Microsoft has to release its stranglehold on Banjo Kazooie, which is not even got to use Right. This is where I'm going to unleash probably a fairly controversial opinion here. But I quite like nuts and bolts. I just don't see why it had to be Banjo Kazooie. No, that's the thing. I liked it as a game. I hated it as a Banjo Kazooie game. Yeah. Because <laughs> it just wasn't Banjo Kazooie at all. It's like if you're going to take on the franchise, then yeah. make another one. Keep similar. it up. Because <laughs> Banjo Tooie was pretty much just Banjo Kazooie. Yeah, and just, that was fine because it was, it was just yeah. a bunch of. It was like an expansion. It was like an expansion. New and levels. it was. It did well. I liked it. Probably yeah. not quite. Well, I don't know. I'm not sure which I like more out of Kazooie and Tooie, but yeah, Nuts and Bolts is the weakest, but it's still a lot of fun. Just. It, as Rachel said, why did it need to be Banjo? <laughs> He's not even known for his building no, prowess. No, exactly. And Kazooie became entirely useless. Um, now, I've got a trick that I want to try out. Not like that, though. That's not how you do this trick. No, this trick is over here. And for the longest time, I didn't really know... Yo, how you doing? Uh, I didn't know how you were meant to do it legitimately, but we'll first see if it works. Out. So you get yourself a spring jump pad. I need to go and stomp the witch's eyes. Yes, you I'll do. I'll go and do that after the one or two jiggies. But if you position yourself in front of this here sarcoph sarcophagus and bounce on top of it, hmm, can't remember quite how you do it. Not like that. Not like that. Okay, I'll try one more time, but I think they've probably fixed it in this version. Um, however, in the N64 version, uh, if 
you got yourself on top of this sarcophagus, and I think you have to do a uh, beak buster. I actually remember what the move was called that time. Mm -hmm. Then, okay. Okay, it looks like they fixed it. Um, then you would get a jiggy. <laughs> um, you're meant to, that's the jiggy you would get from the witch switch in the desert level, which we're going to come up to after the next one. Um, but you could get it without even opening the sarcophagus, but it looks like they've updated it, which, you know, makes sense. <laughs> but, yeah. So, when I was a kid, I, like, I think I just went on to the sarcophagus, sarcophagus um, just for fun. And then I would get a jiggy, and I'd be like, oh! Well done, me! Great! <laughs> and then I'd never know what the point of opening the sarcophagus was. I was like, <laughs> what did that get me? Because usually it would be quite a while after I'd get the jiggy that I would open the sarcophagus, yeah. and I'd be like, Okay, just I'm not sure what this is for. Uh, oh, I believe, believe we have missed another uh, teleportation. I think you're right, you know. Yeah, I think you're right. Going to awaken something in the darkness. Wake up, dude. I know I have, but I think I'll be activating the second soon enough. But yes, so. Once you find, as that cauldron very neatly told us, when you find two cauldrons of the same colour, then you will get yourself a neat little shortcut. A whoop. A whoop. Fire blocks here. <laughs> you get yourself a neat little warp inside a Grunty's lair. Ah! Which can really save you some hassle later in the game. Um, for when you've like stopped playing for a bit and you come back to it and you're back at the entrance and you're like, ah. Oh. You need to go all the way to Bob Gloop Swamp. And you'd be like, no, you can go there ever so slightly faster. Because <laughs> <laughs> all said and done, Gruntilda's lair is not exactly huge. Rawr. So, I believe if we run into this area and destroy this. Very cobweb ah, here. Ah, I've seen you before. Oh, hello. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm trying to have an emotional moment with this cauldron here. <laughs> then that activates the cauldron we just got. And as such, we now can teleport between these two by jumping inside. That's it, you've created a shortcut. <laughs> God damn it, man. <laughs> also, I think there's a... Yeah. I don't quite know why I remember all these things, but ah, I'm does glad he, I did. when you um when you um pay your mumbo tokens, mm -hmm. they get taken out of your total, do they? Yes. Ar har. Ar har. Ar did you think there was like a set number in each level? Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Well, yeah, or rather, I thought like you had like twenty two before or whatever, so yes. I thought, well, the next mumbo sign will have to be like. 30. Oh, I get you. So it's like, yeah, but, gotcha. But no, it, it, it takes, gets taken out of your total. Anyway, so there is Freeze Easy Peak, our next level. But we're running pretty low on time. So thank you guys for watching this. And join us whenever <laughs> the next one is. That's the beauty of YouTube. Yeah. I mean, after the next one's uploaded, then it can be like immediately. But that might not be for like a week from now for the people watching it when this is released. Anyway. <laughs> Rambling. Bye.